And coach, you always talk about the healing power that this game can provide. Obviously, it didn't do anything with my voice this week, but what does it do for this team? Yeah, we're so proud of them. You know, those seniors deserved after going through a tough year. Uh, things didn't work perfectly for them necessarily on the field or with our record. And, uh, you know, to have them have a game like this to end their career here in Ohio Stadium, healing power beyond comprehension. Well, you said, you know, six and five is not such a good year when you're sitting six and four, but when you're seven and four, it's a great year. Well, it really is. And uh, there's a guy right there that got quite a quite an ovation nuge i tell you what he came through as always dustin uh you know we've got some special kids and simon and and uh you know that whole crew they're special dustin almost took you out there getting ready uh pumped up for this one i mean obviously you don't need to say anything more these kids see michigan they they see red right there and there you go troy smith Troy started the game carrying the ball. He likes to get involved early and get banged around and ended up with, what, 145 yards. And, and the second play there, Brandon Joe got out around the corner, and, and it was great to see Brandon in there healthy and, and uh, you know, banging away at it. He backed up third and 12 here. Why not? Well, you know what? Uh, the beautiful thing here was that uh, we had unbelievable protection, and Anthony Gonzalez just kept moving across, and, and uh, Teddy Ginn was our first look, and he was covered, and... Tony got open, and that's special for him. He's really come along. I thought he's had, he's had a good year. Well, last week uh, at Purdue, big catch there, and this week starting off 7-0 uh, and getting out in the jump. Uh, screenplay, you know Michigan runs this screenplay and runs it well. They run it very well, and they gave us a little bit different look uh, in, the, in that particular screen and moved the ball down. 39-yard yeah. pickup there. And then they find uh, Avon. Uh, in the end zone and you know they're a good offensive football team and, and we knew we were going to have our hands full you know they got it back and and uh, here you see Breeston and our guys are going out there Ashton Yabote and A.J. Hawk and Bobby Carpenter and here's our guys playing against the draw and A.J. Hawk Tyler Everett in on the hit uh, you know they're moving the ball down and and uh, their guy Hart did a good job of getting in the end zone and and uh, they're up 14-7. Yeah, Michael Hart with a one-yard run there. 14-7, like you said, with two straight drives and two straight touchdowns. So you got to come after maybe a little pressure. Well, we did, and Tyler Everett uh, forced that one. And, and all of a sudden, uh, they're forced to punt. And their punt rolls clear down uh, to the one-yard line. And to me, this was the key right here. This first play, to get six yards when you're on your own one, and then come back and, and convert a little jump pass there. Yeah. Uh, Troy Smith days. I'm telling you, yeah. it was uh, it was something. But he found Teddy Ginn, and and uh, that drive uh, really, I thought, set the tone uh, for the ball game. Well, it does, and that drive continued over into the second quarter. You just go in the opposite way. 17-yard uh, pickup here to Ted Ginn. Great for San Antonio Holmes. Yep, yeah, that was the man coverage, and he's on Marlon Jackson, who's you know an All-American, and San Antonio Holmes is even better. And uh, Troy Smith there got the first down. Uh, as we got down in there and got the touchdown. Yeah, fights back. 14-14, uh, so you answer the bell. Well, we really did. In a 99-yard variety, here we are running that same similar play that we had run earlier with a little uh, misdirection, and, and Teddy almost came through and scored it out of there and scored, but that was a big gainer. 42 yards complete for the freshman, and then another pickup of 20 from Ryan Hamby. We haven't seen that one all year. Well, no, we've been uh, maybe saving that for this group, and, and uh, needed to score, though, because I think we ended up uh, you know, this time not getting in on the fourth down, and uh, I thought San Antonio got held a little bit, but uh, you know it didn't happen, so they got the ball, but our defense went to work. Yeah, they did. That, that is a fourth down play, and, and unlike what you did on your previous drive from your one and busting it out of there, the defense stacks it up there, and you win the field possession battle. Yeah, in that no question. Bit. You know, our guys are coming through there, Bobby Carpenter and A.J. Hawk and, and uh, Anthony Schlegel, and uh, they're getting after him. So you get back on offense here, and nine yards complete to Anthony Gonzalez. Now, great field position, and Anthony did a great job of, of concentrating on the ball, and, and here Troy you know, steps up and, and makes the big run, and, and we're moving the football down again. Yeah, 14 yards on that play, and again, you're inside the five. There, you get seven cracks from inside the five, and you can't get in the end zone, but you get points this time. Well, we got points, and, and uh, Mike Nugent is automatic there, and, and we've got to do a better job of getting in when we get down there. You get Troy Smith uh, back again, and here he's going to take off again, and, uh, you know, positive yardage from a quarterback. We talk about it all the time. Well, you know, when a quarterback steps up and runs, that devastates the defense, and uh, Troy did that out of his 145 yards, probably over half were step-ups. 
and uh, you know that's that's what it's all about here. He found Teddy again, and you know just Teddy's got the great hands, and they have a way of finding one another. And there's Nuge again from 42 yards straight through the uprights. 26 yards complete on that pickup on a third and 15, so that was huge to get back into field goal range. Then third and 10, uh, Nuge is going to come up with fourth down with a 42-yard field goal, and uh, like you said, it's a 2014 lead at the half. Um, you know, defensively, got to make a couple adjustments when they come down two straight drives and do it. But uh, you know, offensively, you put up big numbers in the first half. Well, we really did. And I thought that that last field goal, I think moving the game from 17-14 to 20-14 was huge. Mm -hmm. um, I thought it took us into the locker room, and we understood as we talked in the locker room that Michigan's big quarter was always the third quarter. They scored 80-some points this year in the third quarter to their opponents 20-some. Uh, but getting that extra three and having the awareness that uh, we needed to win the third quarter and, and really tear their heart out a little mm -hmm. bit, uh, and that's what we talked about. You adjust the game plan every week, uh, of course, as a football coach. Uh, last Purdue doesn't even resemble what this week's game plan looked like. Um, there was a sense of letting some hair down, pulling out some stops in this game. Well, this is the Ohio State-Michigan game. Yeah. And, you know, one thing as we've studied ourselves over the course of our four years here, we've probably done things a lot different in each of the Michigan games because that's, you know, everyone's got all that film on you and they've studied you well and they're smart players and coaches and, and you better give them something new maybe window dressing wise conceptually we didn't do a whole bunch new but we kind of made it look different and uh, you know we thought it helped us all right we're not going to change too much here we'll be back with second half highlights on Buckeye Football Weekly and uh, coach we saw it in the first half stretching Michigan vertically I mean fans like it it's fun getting the ball down the field but that was part of the plan uh, something you thought could work well no question about it there were some matchups that we liked you know we, we think that our young receivers have become pretty good and we know they can run you know we know Santonio can run and we know Teddy can run and we know Anthony Gonzalez can run and and uh, Roy Hall and Devin Lyons are big bodies in there when we have them in a receiver so you know we wanted to go after them and, and uh, we knew that this third quarter was going to be huge and it was going to start with our kickoff team. Yeah, not one of the 105,000 plus second largest crowd in Ohio Stadium history. The largest was two seasons ago against Michigan, of course, uh, but nobody moved for this one. Second half, you come out flying on D. And Dante Whitner coming on the blitz, and, and uh, our guys did a great job, and uh, here they are putting it away to us, and, and uh, you know, when we can start the third quarter with a stop, plus with the uh, miraculous, uh, yeah. you know, situation that Teddy sets up. I don't know if that was an 18-yard return. He got hit just as he caught it. It's amazing, setting ourselves up with field position like that, and we're ahead in the field position battle, had to punt it away, but our defense, you know, playing at Michigan's end of the field, you know, needed to get after them, and they did that, and, and uh, here you see a little jailbreak screen that they threw. They were trying to throw some underneath things to help their young quarterback, and our defense was all over it. Now they got to punt it again. Well, when they punt it again uh, to Ted Ginn, this is, uh, this is the favorite play of the ball game for a lot of people, and Teddy Bowl game knows what to do with this, huh? I'll tell you what, he's amazing. And, uh, you know, that punter might as well forget it. <laughs> and uh, he, he's amazing. That's and just and he loves it. And someone was saying that uh, no person has ever done this in punt return history, uh, you know, what he's done this year. And, and uh, it's a, it is truly amazing. Well, it, it certainly breaks Ohio State's records. It sets a Big Ten record for returns in a season. Bobby Carpenter, who I thought played a very good game, coming up with a big stop there. And here we're putting pressure. Simon Frazier knocks it loose. And... Mike Kudla almost had the interception, but he's got a little brace on his shoulder and he couldn't reach because uh -huh. the brace had him uh, stuck. He couldn't get his other arm out and <laughs> they punted it down to their credit. And again, the first play, when we get the ball and the coming out yeah. was a big play and, and that is huge. Brandon Joe busts it right there, uh, straight up the middle, pick up a 12. Then you go 48 yards from Troy Smith on a, on a play he probably should have been sacked. Well, that's right. He spun off uh, number 99, uh, who was his high school teammate, which uh, uh, Troy did a great job. We always talk about step up, something good will happen. And here, great move by Santonio Holmes. He was on what we call a look route, which means he can take the defender where he wants. And he had good eye contact uh, with Troy Smith, and Troy did a great job of delivering the the seven pointer. Yeah, and that's a 97 yard drive on the heels of a 99 yep. yard drive. And then, uh, you know, they're going to throw it up to Braylon Edwards, of course. Yep. And uh, Edwards is a good player. He's a, you know, makes plays for him and glad he's graduating. That's <laughs> certainly for your sake. 45 yards on that. And then Ashton Yabote steps up uh, and again makes a big play. Ashton right. Yabote was solid. I'll tell you what, speaking of guys that make plays, Ashton Yabote is so dependable. 
always where he needs to be. He slows the game down and is under control all the time. And uh, I don't think Braylon caught any balls on him when uh, Ashton was over on his side. Certainly switched it up and uh, changed things as far as the Michigan receivers were looking. And that's Avant with a catch, taking it out of bounds, 13 yards complete there. And then up top, 38 yards to Braylon Edwards. This is another example, just throwing it up top. Well, it really was. It was, it was great uh, concentration on Edwards' part and excellent throw by their quarterback. And now all of a sudden, you know, the, the tempo has gone the other way. But I thought our punt unit, uh, Kyle Toronto, I mean, that's got to be the punt of the day. Uh, when he, I don't know how far it was. 71 yards. Yeah, that's the punt of the day. Yeah, I'd <laughs> say, especially at that great point. Great coverage. Great mm -hmm. Antonio Smith and Sergio Welsh down there. Great effort on the coverage. Certainly when you're backed up uh, in your own end to get it out there. And then nine yards complete, but not ten. Right. So short of the so first down. Fourth and one. Oh. And uh, here they are going for it. And they decided to go for it on a throw, which uh, uh, they thought they had it, but... Uh, all of a sudden, that's huge. They're throwing it to their big-time guy, and when you take it over on downs uh, at the 29-yard line, that's new dramatic range. Well, it really is, and he stepped up, and all of a sudden now it's a 16-point a game, if I'm not mistaken, and, and uh, they had to score twice and get two two-pointers. And uh, but they kept throwing it up there, but here you see Ashton Yabote. He's not going to let Braylon Edwards uh, have the football. Ashton is a special player. Absolutely. Uh, almost picked off there. Falls incomplete. And then uh, you get another good rush here on Chad Henney. He's got to throw this one away. Yep, sure did. And, and I think that was Quinn Pitcock in there and Simon Frazier. And, and uh, those guys played their hearts out. Yeah, well, Simon said afterwards he wasn't hurt on that play. He was just taking it all in. And then uh, Bobby Carpenter is going to take a little bit of this receiver in. Well, he sure did. Uh, I thought Bobby was all over the field. And, and uh, they threw it up high there. And, and uh, he punished them. Nate Sally, uh, good to have him back this week. Obviously not oh part of the Purdue game. Uh, what a difference he makes making the interception here. Yeah, Nate's a, he's a dependable guy as well, and he's where he's supposed to be. And there's the beautiful formation. The greatest formation in football is the one where you take a knee. You love that. You'll take the two-yard loss, and, uh, and you don't care. You have beaten Michigan. Uh, you're a little wet out there, I see. Yeah, well, it was a little cold, and the, plus they poured it way too early. Yeah. Um, they poured it with a minute or so to go, and we all know Ohio State games aren't over with a minute to go, but uh, it was a great day for us. Three times out of four tries, take Michigan out. Uh, this one's nice, always nice for the seniors, but, but good for everyone. That's a pair of gold pants. Uh, these yeah. seniors take three pairs of gold pants. You know, that is something. That was what Dustin mentioned after the game. You know, he said uh, he's pretty proud of that fact, and, and uh, it's a great challenge for the rest of us to see if we can get more in the future. All right. Well, we got plenty more coming up here. Uh, talking about those seniors, we've got a senior salute coming up in our Buckeye football.